Alright, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we still have two main areas to watch. Tropical storm Katia, which we'll focus on in a minute, and our current threat, which could try to become tropical storm Lee from this tropical wave and this frontal boundary intersecting now over the Gulf of Mexico, and this may cause some mischief to develop. Notice we have a large area of heat in here that is going to be trying to bundle in two surface trough boundaries within it. This argues for mischief here as these trough boundaries try to merge and within this bundle of heat we could start to get some surface low pressure. Notice that down here again we still have a void in the eastern Pacific. We have a random tropical depression here that's trying to move inland and really isn't a threat. You can see that the monsoon trough is way up here over Central America and the outflow is already coming out of the east and the upper levels over the eastern Pacific. So we have no competition down here at all which means that we're going to be looking for this to try to hog all this energy and try to bring it together. If we zoom in here, we can see that if Lee's going to try to develop, it's probably going to be somewhere in this region as it moves west northwest. It would develop up in here, but the feature that may develop from it is this feature, which is trying to develop some low level vorticity along this tropical wave axis. The trade winds in here are sort of stalling out, indicating a westerly force trying to pull them this way, which indicates we may have some low pressure trying to develop in the embryonic stages here along the wave axis north of the Yucatan Channel. And you can see there's a lot of upper clouds. might be a little hard to see, but there's some upper clouds racing out of the west-southwest over the central gulf here. This is is providing some wind shear and the, the outflow is over here so there's some ridging up here in the upper levels but there is some shearing going on on the northern side that's because we have an upper trough draped across the northern Gulf of Mexico in here you might be able to see it if we turn on the upper winds here yeah, there's a trough over the northern gulf, and this is going to be shearing for a little while, but this will have to move north out of the way, and the reason why is it's going to have to, because see all this heat in here, it's surging northwestward, and again, we already have the outflow coming out of the northeast over the eastern Pacific, so we have nothing down in the Pacific that's going to be trying to create outflow and increase the shear over our Atlantic system, so without that competition, this heat is going to easily try to bubble up over the Gulf of Mexico, force this trough to either split away with one piece going off this way and another going off this way, or it'll just short, sort of shift off to the northwest and remain a broad area of upper level westerlies as the upper ridging takes over over the Gulf of Mexico, which will provide a more favorable environment for pressures to lower and for a system to develop. Now here's the low level surface steering currents, low level surface, not the same thing, low level steering currents here, 700 to 850 millibar level. If we have a little bit of a low trying to develop in here, it's probably going to move northwest or west-northwest right towards the upper Texas coast, and it's not going to quite make it there. It'll probably end up stalling in here due to the fact that the ridge out here is supposed to strengthen as the short wave up in the northwest tries to cut across. And you can see that short wave over here entering the Pacific Northwest. This is going to be coming across, taking its sweet time trying to get through the pattern, but eventually will end up in the east, and this will be the main steering influence on our system here. This is where the GFS has the storm in 120 hours, day 5. It kind of it does move it up this way, but then it turns it northeast sharply towards the Florida Panhandle. I find the solution a little bit unrealistic here. I don't really expect this to occur. I much better like the idea of where the European Ensembles has the storm in six days over here in the northwest gulf, providing great support with model variants and sub-1000 millibar low on the European Ensemble mean, which is very substantial, offering fantastic support for eventual development of this system. Now let's see, this is the European Day 4 showing that the short wave is still back here, taking its time getting into the Midwest, and you can see where the low is in the Northwest Gulf here, slowly developing by this weekend. This is Sunday, I believe, and once we jump out to Day 6, the short wave finally makes it to the east here and starts digging in to the Northeast U.S. over the Great Lakes, and you can see that the ridge has to build pr pretty strong over the Four Corners and Upper Texas region, which means that this is going to have a hard time moving straight into Texas, and this ends up stalling here, just sort of strengthening and deepening in the Northwest Gulf without really going anywhere. And then if we jump out to day 8, the short wave leaves out, and we have a flatter flow aloft, and we have this general ridge over this area. 
this storm, which would be Lee, would probably eventually find a way towards the coast somewhere along this region from Louisiana to Texas based on this pattern. And of course, we can see Cotty out here again. Notice the ridge building in between. Remember what I talked about yesterday with the outflow from what would be Lee could help strengthen the heights in here, help kick Cotty out to the north here, near or west of Bermuda. And I'm not sure what this is here on the European. This frontal boundary basically went from zero to hero in 24 hours on this model run. 24 hours before this frame, there was nothing here. I really don't know what this is. It looks baroclinic, but it looks a bit suspicious and too deep for a baroclinic low in the subtropical in the middle of September so we'll see what this is here it may disappear on the next run I'm not really sure but if we go out to the tropical ocean heat content for the Gulf of Mexico you can see what's concerning here is that we've got a lot of warmth here abnormally high levels of energy sitting in the northwest Gulf of Mexico ocean and this pattern is such that we could have the system sitting in the Gulf of Mexico for quite a while because we're going to have that short wave coming across which tries to tug the system northeast at the same time as it was trying to come west so you end up stalling the system in here and it is possible that it gets drawn into Louisiana northeast by this trough but then you can see that just like the pattern has been all year the short wave leaves and so then it's caught under the ridge again so by eight days this storm is still sitting in here chances are it will be trying to develop as soon as three days from now. So that means it's going to have three to five days over water after it develops given this pattern and this could be something that sits around for a while over the water and if the water is this warm in here, 31 degrees Celsius with this kind of depth showing this kind of energy, we could have something try to wind up a little bit. The good, the good news about this right now is that we're going to be have dry air and training off of Texas if we have a system sitting in here and that would help limit it. We're also going to some shearing to the north of it that may make the upper environment not quite ideal. So there are some limiting factors in play here. However, we have seen things wind up pretty quickly in this area of the Gulf and this this Western Gulf is notorious for letting homegrown mischief get going pretty fast so we will have to be watching this the good news is that with development likely to occur in this box from 25 to 30 north 90 to 95 west that's where I think this will end up developing if we get the storm developing in here chances are you're gonna get some rain bands moving into coastal Texas at least which means that some rain from Louisiana coast all the way to Texas is probably going to occur if we have a storm sitting in here you'll at least get some showers even if the storm never makes it to Texas and moves off this way there's still likely to be some showers in here so folks are probably going to get some rain and some drought relief so at this point, I think we're really cheering the system on more than we're dreading its development in here, hoping that this develops, hoping that it stays weak and brings some rain in here. But again, with enough, enough time over this warm water, we could be dealing with a fairly significant tropical cyclone if it actually develops and sits in here for a few days. So we'll have to be watching that very closely. This is Tropical Storm Katia out here, still chugging along west-northwest. We have a lot of dry air still to the north and dry air to the west here. It looks like it's doing a fairly good job of keeping that out of the core in here. This will continue moving west-northwest. This is the NHC track, which I don't really have too many problems with here. It should be a major hurricane by early next week moving off into the Central Atlantic. We'll see how close it gets to my coordinates that are down here and if the track has to shift south. The steering currents that we were looking at show that there's still a big weakness over the Bermuda area with the high centered up here. We'll have to see if this weakness persists, in which case my coordinates may end up being too far north, but we'll have to see. You can see that this big upper level low spinning around in here is weakening the ridge all through this area, which is allowing Kaya to gain a lot of latitude in here. We'll have to see if that continues. This is great news for the islands in here because I think it's fairly high probability at this point that it avoids the islands and she'll end up somewhere north of them in here. And eventually I think she'll recurve near or west of Bermuda. Bermuda may have to keep an eye on this system very closely here. As the models have shifted closer, I still think she'll end up a little bit west of, but I am starting to lean towards the idea that she won't be a big threat to the United States given that she is developing very fast. And these Cape Verde storms that develop quickly into hurricanes in here, it's pretty hard to get them all the way west. The pattern could still support something like that. At this point though, I think the most likely solution is that she ends up curving out in here, especially since again, we may have Lee sitting around for several days, which again, I think will build the ridging in here and kick her out as almost a guarantee there. So we'll have to be keeping a close eye on Cadia for Bermuda and the potential for Lee to develop in here possibly threatening the Louisiana and Texas coastlines within 
a few days getting into next week, hopefully bringing some beneficial rainfall more than a wind threat. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.